So you want to learn how to do this for your given story. You may be writing hard science fiction, which is more like this. You may be writing military science fiction, in which it's like this for people who haven't read the genre a lot, but it's really more like this for people who have, or actually more like this, um, because there are certain conventions of the genre that you can take for granted. You also have to be aware in doing this um, that certain things have been done so many times that they've become a cliche. This is not as a big a deal if your audience is constantly refreshing, which is why you, you may pick up a YA book being written today and say, they're just doing the same stuff that, of the books I read when I was a kid. These new writers are hacks. Well, no, what's going on there is it is a constant really refreshing group of, um, of readers, and what's old to you is still new to them. And what you can do there is not something you can necessarily do in an epic fantasy, which has a uh, group that continues to read and tends to be very fluent in their genre and tends to get tired of the same concepts. That doesn't happen as much in other genres, uh, depending on your readership. For instance, um, it's really nice on your learning curve if you can start with your protagonist in a small rural village because there's going to be lots of small rural villages in your fantasy world, because that's how you know, the, the tech level is, who then slowly goes out and experiences the world. It, it works the same way here. Problem is, some really great writers did stories like that, and now readers pick those up and are like, I've read this before. And you run into problems. Even if you do it well, you run into problems that uh, the readers are you know, wanting this sort of blend of familiar and strange, and you're giving them too much familiar. The familiar and the strange. This is another thing to keep in mind. You, you're probably surprised. I'm not even talking about world building yet. I'm talking about how to set up your world building. This stuff is important. This is the nuts and bolts behind the scenes that, as writers, is important for you to think about. Familiar and strange. One thing I love about being filmed is that you get all of my spelling mistakes uh, immortalized for all time. I, can't, I don't know if I spelled those right. Um, familiar and strange. Familiar versus the strange. Um, when we pick up a story, we are looking for a certain blend between the familiar and the strange. This is going to depend on the reader and the genre, what that blend is, whether it's 10% of one and 90% of the other, or whether it's the other way around. Uh, it's going to be very individual to you. And genres change over time, uh, depending on you know, what they want and what they don't want, and when certain certain things get big, people suddenly want more familiar for a while until they get tired of it, and then they want more strange. This can be troubling for you because you, know, you, you be, can be asking yourself, well, how do I keep a track of these trends and things, and should I be worrying about this? And not necessarily. Um, trying to track trends is hard. Uh, people are paid a lot of money in New York to do it poorly um, because it's, it's basically impossible to do well. Keeping track of trends in fiction is tough. Uh, if people knew how to do it, there would be more deliberate bestsellers, and there are not very many deliberate bestsellers. The things that become bestsellers are still sometimes a little opaque to us. People were completely shocked by the Da Vinci Code. He'd written two books that didn't sell, and suddenly this one, which basically was the same um, sort of story and things, took off hugely. People were shocked by Twilight. Um, there had been people talking around in, um, in genre circles that vampires were a, a, an out-of-trend sort, of, uh, sort of genre at the time. I, uh, I sat in rooms and listened to people talk about how because of Anne Rice's peak a short time before, vampires were now on the out and they wouldn't have a resurgence for a while, and then Twilight took off. Judging this is hard. You don't necessarily need to be able to judge this, except you can probably judge it for yourself. And if you're writing in a genre that you read a lot, which is a good idea, you can judge how much of each you like as a reader and kind of use that as your guidepost, all right? Um, I talked to you about this so that you can be aware of these things, not so that you can say, well, it looks like people are liking 31% familiar, and so I'm going, you know, that's not what we're looking at here. We're just looking at the whole concept. But you can, you can, you can see um, what I'm talking about here as yourselves, as readers, um, and, uh, and what things appeal to you. 
For instance, in certain genres, um, cozy mysteries. That's an actual genre. Um, cozies, they're, they're mysteries that you read by the fireplace. Cozies. Um, they tend to be, you know, going to have a different sort of um, blend where it's like this is the strange and the rest is the familiar, right? If you go specifically looking for a cozy mystery, you want a certain thing. Um, the strange in this, strange just means different, is probably going to be the identity of the detective uh, because cozy mysteries tend to f sink or swim based on how interesting their detective is that's solving the mysteries. You have a really interesting detective and everything else um, is very familiar about the way that the, uh, the story uh, plays out. Um, the plot twist, maybe you could argue, make an argument for the plot twist being the strange or not, but the, the whole concept of the book. Um, at the, on the other hand, if you're writing New Weird, which is a, um, a now old genre of science fiction, but it was really cool about five years ago, the idea was to do mostly strange and very little familiar, to try and really shake up the genre and do interesting new things with it. Um, who writes new weird um, depends on your personal beliefs and what people are arguing. But you know, go read some um, some China Mieville if you want to find someone who um, was trying to shake this up. Uh, another person, uh, Cory Doctorow, um, writes some very interesting things that are that are very much more on the strange. It's like, all right, we're going to shake this up and try and do very different things. Your blend will depend on your specific genre and your goals, all right? I've been kind of thinking about this in context of characters. It's like, I know lots of people who like, they don't like, like just the, the hero who like is a good fighter and like he like is good. It's like, is that like kind of the same thing? Like they like the gritty? Um, yeah, the, the new gritty in fantasy um, launched by George R. R. Martin was one of these waves. Um, for a long time, epic was the big deal. Um, and what we call heroic um, was kind of a, a subsect of fantasy. Uh, Michael Moorcock and um, David Gemmel were writing this sort of thing. And then George R. R. Martin came along and broke basically um, big epic storyline, but used all the kind of grittiness of the heroic storylines, like Michael Moorcock or things like that, or, or David Gemmel, and wrote Game of Thrones. Um, and after that, people were really interested in this new big thing. It was really popular. It was quite, a, quite different from things like the Wheel of Time, which had been selling so well before. And so people started looking for things like that. And so it was that moment of, hey, we love this, this new thing. It's, um, it's very strange. It has a lot of familiar, but there's some strange as to what we really like. And so they started hunting for more and more. And so this genre burgeoned. Um, and we, we see a lot, very few doing the actual epic, gritty blend that George R. R. Martin does. Mostly it was the, um, the grittiness took off in a, very, um, in a very powerful way. And you think had people like Joe Abercrombie, um, who got very popular writing this sort of thing, which became its subsect of genre. But it's fun, funny that as it becomes more of a genre, the people who are reading it drift away from the strange and more toward the familiar, right? This becomes our genre. I like this genre. I'm going to read this more. Originally, what got me into it was the fact that it was different, and now it's something I want to read much more of, and they settle into this and read this for a while, and that's what we do as readers. It's very common. Um, and, you know, eventually, sometime in publishing, there may become a wave where someone reads something else, and then it gets big, and a bunch of people migrate toward this and read it. It happened with, um, with Harry Potter, actually. A lot of the people I've noticed that were reading epic fantasy jumped to children's um, and started reading the YA fantasies during that era. And the epics kind of faltered for a while because people were either going toward the gritty, they were going toward the children's, or they wanted the, um, the, the urban fantasy, which for a while, epic was dominant. And then those three kind of all took chunks out of it and epic floundered for a long while. There hasn't been a major, big, um, best-selling new epic fantasy series. Um, Really, there wasn't one in the 2000s. Steven Erickson gave it a run for his money, but he never hit the heights that the, the 90s um, big uh, epic fantasy writers did. So you, the closest thing you'd get to that is are people like Rothfuss and me. Um, and, you know, uh, who knows what's happening next. Um, and so for a while, again, epic was dominant. And you got to rem remember when I talk about things like this, I'm talking about new writers. Uh, established series continue to do well regardless of the waves of what happens with the fiction. 
Um, you know, Terry Brooks has always sold books, right? <laughs> he sold books in the 70s. He's selling books now. Um, that's because Terry Brooks becomes an established brand name and rides all of these waves where everything turns uh, against Tolkien-esque fiction and people aren't wanting to read about elves and dwarves anymore. They still like Terry Brooks. They just aren't looking for that um, from a new writer. Um, and so it's don't use the big established brand names as an example of what you should be doing. Really just use your instincts and what you want to read and write that, okay? All right, so this is all foundation for writing things with a cool setting. 